Do you hate lockpicking? Do you hate the fact you lose all your stamina when you're sneaking? Get in trouble with the guards a bit too often? Suffering from a case of being poor? Well, do I have the product for you? Allow me to introduce the Ledger Domain Ledger Domain Ledger Domain Lockpicking Skill Tree with benefits such as forcing locks, reducing sneak cost, reducing gold paid for your bounties, and the ability to make money by stealing easier and more efficient. Now I'm sure you're wondering what all this is going to cost you, but I have to remind you, you have no money. So, if you just sign these papers... Hold on a second there. No need to pay anything to me. Your friendly neighborhood contest 5. The Ledgerman skill tree is more of a quality of life tree than anything that will drastically change your game outside maybe PvP for the sneak passive. But, that being said, if you want the easiest time in this game or just want to min-max your character, then you're in the right place. You can gain XP for the Ledgerman skill tree through a variety of ways. Picking locks, pickpocketing, and most importantly, selling and laundering stolen goods. In case you aren't sure what laundering is, laundering is basically paying the item's value to the fence in order to make it legally yours. This means that if you ever have to turn in stolen goods for some reason, that particular item will stay in your inventory and even stack with other normal items. Through passive play, before I sat down to level up my Ledgerman, I was already around level 7 or 8, which is fairly high compared to most people casually playing the game, normally around level 2 or 3. However, I can guarantee you a full level up per day. By selling and laundering the maximum limit per day, but primarily laundering, you can rapidly level up your ledgerman. In fact, you actually get slightly more than one full level per day. The only reason you can only gain a single level per day is because of the daily allowed selling and laundering limit, which starts at a base of 50 and increases as you put points into the trafficker passive, up to a maximum of 140 items per day. The daily reset time for the laundering and selling time, at least on Xbox NA server, is 10 p.m. Central Time. By far the easiest method to obtain cheap stolen goods for laundering and selling is through the tested and true Canarthi's Roost Sheep Spot. This has been and will continue to be the best spot to do so until the day Zoss breaks it. However, there's a catch. There are three sheep herders watching over the flock. Two stand guard at all times, while the third walks along the paths around Canarthi's Roost. If you don't kill these sheep herders, they will certainly not take lightly to you killing and stealing their livelihoods work. By far the easiest method to deal with these sheep herders is with the Blade of Woe, that allows you to instantly one-trap most neutral NPCs. But here's the real catch. The Blade of Woe can only be obtained by those that own the Dark Brotherhood DLC. If you do own it, great. I'll show a better rotation of me killing the sheep so you can understand it better. But if you don't, that's alright too. I search around a bunch of zones for something comparable to the sheeps of Canarthi's Roost, but let me finish up with these sheep first. A quick note when farming for Ledgerman, it would be wise of you to set your auto loot stolen goods setting on, along with prevent attacking innocents off, which you'll have to do anyways in order to use the blade of woe and kill the sheep, but regardless, doing this will significantly speed you up. One day, I decided to follow the third sheep herder, and she led me to a slightly smaller flock of sheep just a little ways down the path. This spot has only one other sheep herder sitting at a rock for the few sheep, but be careful. I've actually been detected by some random NPC to your left by the guild traders before, who saw me kill him. Anywho, once you kill and loot those sheep, just run back to the other spot and wait a little bit. I highly suggest trying to pickpocket the herders at least once, if not twice, if possible, since they can be looted a maximum of three times, and we loot them once when they die, so it's pointless to risk a pickpocket three times. Especially try to do this once you have a high pickpocket chance, which should be fairly quickly. If you want to grind and level once a day, just gather however much per day you need and turn it in. But personally, I grinded out about 2,000-ish guts in a day, and would just log out in front of the fence each day to remind myself to turn the guts in when I logged in, and it worked pretty well. Another pro tip is to slot a resto staff on, even if you don't use it. I did this on my tank personally, and just to go ahead and throw on a resto, all you gotta do is hold down heavy attack and look at the sheep. Works a lot better than say a bow, which you have to tap constantly. I mean, even a lightning staff would work, honestly. I just had a resto on me, so use either a resto or a lightning staff and you'll be fine. All right, let's get to the non-DLC area, shall we? I searched every starter island and found that, with the exception of Canarthi's Roost, they were all honestly just horrible. I didn't even find anything stealable in any significant quantity in Stress Makai at all. I remembered once a long, long time ago, there was a group of Guar somewhere in one of the earlier Ebonheart pack zones I stumbled across. 
but even after sweeping three zones, I still couldn't find them. Eventually, I gave up on finding the elusive Gwar herd and decided to head to another old location. This ship's in Daggerfall, Glenumbra. There are a total of three ships here, but it's honestly more time efficient to just use the two grouped together on the upper left side, or northwest side for those of you who find the compass easier for some odd reason. There is never anybody in the boats, so you will never receive a bounty, so take everything. Once you've fully looted both boats, just log out of your character and back in, and they'll be reset. When selling and laundering this way, be sure to launder the provisioning items first, since they're the cheapest, generally only a single gold each, and sell the most expensive items. Since this takes up a lot of inventory space, I suggest coming with either a large bag or planning on multiple trips. You know, I've suddenly come to the realization that I haven't even told you where the fence is yet. Basically, you can look on your map in nearly any city, and you'll see this place called the Thieves' Refuge. Just go ahead and go down there, see someone named The Fence, walk over to them, and they'll have an option to both sell and launder your stolen goods. I've also come to the realization that I never told you how to get the Blade of Woe, just that it came from the Dark Brotherhood DLC. If you're unsure on how to get it, first, I just recommend starting the quest line. You get it right after your first quest completion, and it's quite simple, really. To use it, all you do is go into stealth behind someone, and once you're hidden, it'll pop up as a synergy option. On PC, I believe it's X, and on console, at least on Xbox, it's pressing Y and B at the same time. That being said, if you manage to find the elusive Guar Herd, or have anything else that I might not have mentioned in the video, please comment down below. But, with that out of the way, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.